Hi guys, how are you all today? Welcome. Welcome to the continuation of my toxin series that's been going on for the last two weeks. Um, I've talked about polycystic ovarian syndrome, I've talked about stubborn weight loss and the impact toxins have. On Tuesday I talked to the wonderful Alex Stewart and we talked about your environment, your home, going low tox with your products, with your beauty products. Also talked about her wonderful e-course Go Low Tox which is launching on Monday. Um, link is attached if you're looking to um, sign up to that. It's a wonderful course with lots of information and expert guests and um, the newest research for things that you should be doing. And um, today I want to talk to you about endocrine disruptors. I'm actually going to really focus in on one and I did talk about this um, last week but I'd like to just go into it a little bit deeper, just explain the ramifications, the issues and then also give you some strategies to help you detoxify from this. So endocrine disruptors are um, found in antimicrobials, they're found in polycarbonate plastics, other plastics, materials, flame retardants, um, everything really in terms of you know synthetic things that we are exposed to, um, also beauty and cleaning products. Um, endocrine disruptors work in a couple of different ways and I did talk about this but I'm just quickly going to briefly go over this again. Endocrine disruptors either mimic your hormones, so by mimicking um, they're actually working as if the other hormone was working. So this is where we get conditions like estrogen dominance. We can get estrogen dominant cancers, endometriosis, fibroids, melasma, so estrogen dominant conditions. So what's happening is, is the endocrine disruptor is mimicking estrogen and these could be phthalates, flame retardants, um, BPA, these kind of um, chemicals that are mimicking estrogen or other hormones. Secondly, they can block the hormone receptor. So when they block the hormone receptor, they actually stop the other hormone from working. And this can happen a lot in insulin resistance. So if insulin is resistant, um, can, is it part of metabolic syndrome? And that can cause you to be pre-diabetic, have problems with blood glucose, have problems with insulin, then lead to conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome, metabolic syndrome, heart conditions, um, glucose tolerance issues, and later on diabetes and also conditions with the brain like dementia and Alzheimer's. What essentially happens is the endocrine disruptor like BPA or the phthalates or the flame retardants binds to the receptor so the insulin's not working. Your body then pumps out more insulin, your more insulin um, is in your blood, is in your body causing havoc and causing you to be more resistant. So that's a second way they work. The third way they can work is they can disrupt your feedback mechanism. So we have all these beautiful feedback mechanisms and I'm finding this is happening an awful lot. People's feedback mechanisms aren't seem to talking, they're not seem, they don't seem to be working properly. I'll give you an example. So let's look at thyroid stimulating hormone, then, then um, T4 is made in our thyroid gland and then that goes to the target tissue to make T3. What I'm essentially finding is um, this feedback mechanism from the pituitary to the thyroid is just not working and that can be due to these endocrine disruptors mucking this up and causing all sorts of problems which then leads to hypothyroidism, um, issues with your um, thyroid hormones being out of whack too high or too low. So I'm seeing a lot of that actually. Um, so BPA, biphenyl A, is actually found in a lot of polycarbonate plastic. Um, it's found um, in, also found in flame retardants, but, but generally in lots of plastics that, that are used. And so these are plastics like our plastic bottles, baby bottles, plastic cutlery, plastic bags, um, containers. Um, now there is BPA free, but it's really kind of a similar chemical. It's just kind of BPA free. A lot of it is also greenwashing as well, which I discussed with Alex Stewart. You know, it's not necessarily a safer chemical. We don't have as much studies on it. Um, what studies are finding, and I found a couple of studies here in terms, I wanted to look at BPA and in terms of BPA found in water. And, it, and a couple of studies have come, I'm looking at a couple of studies here from the Journal of Hazardous Materials. I think that's the one I wanted to just touch on. And it talks about how B 
BPA found in water, in water bottles, you know, is within safe limits. But I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute because here's the thing about BPA. I'm going to go through the whole detoxific detox detoxification because if you've got anything going on in your body, who says that is a safe limit for you? You know, if you're on medication, if your liver's not working properly, if your gut's not working properly, even that low amount might not be detoxing properly. So it's kind of like these studies are showing that there, there is BPA in bottled water, but it's at a safe limit limit possibly but but we don't know everyone's so different another thing they have found is it's been found you know obviously in milk in baby bottles um and particularly what changes it is when you heat the baby bottle you wash it in the dishwasher or you scrub it with a brush it kind of seems to activate the bpa and then it comes out in the liquid as well um, so that's just something to, you know, this is why using glasses is becoming more fashionable and, and is important. Um, it's one of the safest things as long as it doesn't have any sort of layers on it, but definitely using glass. Other places that BPA have been found, um, port, you know, um, little crowns and fillings on your teeth. I've got fillings on my teeth here. So I essentially would have been having like a small dose of BPA since the age of eight. And that actually could explain some of my hormone issues that I had in my teenage years as well, some problems going on there. When I was young, I had a, a ruptured ovarian cyst, which was very, very painful. And that kind of started me on my journey to hormone imbalance through my teens and early 20s until I figured it out. And actually, maybe this is part of it. Maybe this kind of small, even though it's a very small amount of BPA, you know, coming into your bloodstream and your liver having to detoxify it uh, can be difficult over time. So it's kind of like chronic exposure. Um, uh, dental, so those materials, um, food cartons, coffee mugs all of those kind of things contain bpa and studies are also coming out in terms of um you know bpa and these endocrine disruptors being found in rivers and lakes and there's actually it's a very famous study where the bpa is actually changed um changed of uh, uh water wildlife like lizards and frogs it's actually changed kind of the sex and changed the the um the genitalia on these species so it's interesting to think about how it does can can change that and how it, how it can interrupt that and the impact that will have actually maybe on our future and also um, with fertility um, prostate cancer breast cancer as well has been shown to be implicated in as well so it's very much related to that kind of hormone health estrogen testosterone pituitary gland and also our ovaries and those sex glands as well so um there's m many more studies coming out. I've literally only just got a couple here as well. But when I write this up on a blog, I will um, I will um, point to some of these studies, which are actually very important studies and studies that we should be listening to. In fact, so next is um, so we've talked about BPA. We've talked about what these endocrine disruptors do and kind of the three main actions and the three main impacts that they will have on your hormonal health. I talked the last week about also in terms of fatty tissue and I'll go into that a little bit more but first it's good to understand so you know if it's a problem for you it's good to actually understand and know how we detox these things from our body because for some people you can be exposed to loads of chemicals you can be exposed to BPA and you're perfectly fine and this could be because you've got wonderful liver function you have no other issues going on your methylating function is working um, you've got no sensitivities, you're not in high stress, and so everything's working really well. And what, 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 we, what we see with things like endocrine disruptors is if your liver and your gut and your kidneys are working really well, and you've just got this small kind of, um, this small, uh, a small kind of influx of BPA coming into your body, exposure, sorry, small exposure coming into your body, then your liver, through glucuronidation, which is in phase two of your liver detoxification, through that, your, your liver will get rid of it, it will go out through the bile. But here's the thing, here's where things get a little bit funny, you know, what if you don't have a gallbladder? If you don't have a gallbladder, what's going on? You don't have as much bile than the person next to you that does have a gallbladder, so are you detoxifying it as enough? Maybe it's getting stuck in the bowel and then is it being reabsorbed? So these are all questions you need to think about when you've got your exposure. Now, of course, minimizing your exposure is always the best way to go, but it is difficult when we're in this modern day society. I'm looking around this room already. I've got a fan over there that's plastic. 
I've got um, even my air purifiers, plastic, TV, all these things that are plastic, flame retardants on, on sofas and couches and that kind of thing. Although I realized the other day that most of my furniture for the last 20 years has been second hand. So um, that might have a bit more mold on, but what it won't, the flame retardants and those phthalates will have kind of already broken down, hopefully. So it won't be, I'm hoping won't be as, as bad. I know there is a time, they, they've kind of got like a half life. So there is a time when it's worse, when it's really broken down and a lot of the fumes are coming out. And I haven't actually looked into that properly, but my, um, my thought was maybe older furniture was better for me. Anyway, we'll see. Um, where was I? I was talking about the pathway. So glucuronidation. This is the this is the phase two. So we've got phase one of liver detoxification. We've got phase two, and then we kind of got phase three where it's funneled everywhere. But in phase one, we've got these fat soluble hormones, these toxins that are that are fat soluble, that like fat, fat loving um, toxins. They're called hormones and phase one will break this down and then that will that will funnel into phase two where it will actually make it into ingredients that our body can then excrete through the bile or through the kidneys and BPA and most endocrine disruptors they are broken down through glucuronidation and also sulfation okay so these are the two phases in this phase two there's a few different phases there's methylation there's a few other phases but these are the two phases that break down the endocrine disruptors and break down the BPA and send it out of your body um, and what we do know <gasps> interesting that's really interesting phone charger computer charger i you know what i hadn't even thought of all of that everything's plastic everything is and so this is why it's in this is why limiting it where you can we've already talked a little bit about that but then really understanding what your liver does so this glue this this pathway this pathway in phase two also breaks down other things so it breaks down fat it breaks down a hormone so cortisol estrogen um, testosterone it breaks down um, t4 hormone so you're not t4 dominant and t3 um, your t3 is low it also breaks down amines it breaks down um, all of your steroid hormones and makes them into metabolites um, it breaks down um, what else what else am i thinking um, the phthalates, so all of those endocrine disruptors, and also what it breaks down and what it manages is medication. So this is a biggie. So if you're somebody that's on medication, you're on aspirin every day, or you're taking lots of ibuprofen every day, that is the phase. So this is what can make you more sensitive to being exposed to BPA, being exposed to these endocrine disruptors. And this is why not everyone's affected and some people are affected more than others. Now, another thing as well, and I was talking to Alex Stewart the other day on the interview, we talked about mold. And this is the phase of the liver as well that will break down fungus, fungal toxins. So if you've got candida and you've taken uh, an antifungal or you've um, got mold in the house and you're spraying it with bleach. You've then got the byproducts of the fungi or the mold and that's got to go through this process in the liver. Now, your liver can only do so much at one time. It can really only do so much at one time. So what's happening is, is this phase one is pumping everything through and it gets kind of caught up in this phase two, which is now slowing down. And so what tends to happen is, that's when you get BPA and the endocrine disruptors going into the body and going into fatty tissue and being stored there in a safe space. And you also get the byproducts of your liver starting to break it down in the phase two, either being reabsorbed in the gut or causing more inflammation and causing liver damage. So this is a really severe, when someone gets liver damage or high liver enzymes, if you're one of those people that have high liver enzymes, because the liver is just, it's really struggling with what to do, phase one is too fast, so you might be over detoxing in phase one, and then phase two is just overburdened, overwhelmed, not sure what to do. So then what tends to happen is, it will send a lot of that BPA to fatty tissue, and this is where you get the stubborn weight issue, this is where you get the resistant weight loss issue, and it gets stored in the weight. Now, this is where the problem occurs when you do fast, when you suddenly fast, or you do an intense detox, an in intense weight loss, sorry, in you, do, you do intense weight loss, or you fast, but you haven't actually detoxified, or you haven't actually minimized your exposure. Minimizing your exposure should always be the first, then detoxifying. If you haven't done those two and you suddenly do a fast, what you end up doing is you end up kind of loading that BPA into your bloodstream. And this is where people can get really sick. They can get skin problems, dizzy, foggy. 
some people even get neuro neurological problems um, but this can actually be quite dangerous so before you even do an intense fast if you think you've got bpa exposure or endocrine disruptors exposure which we all have and you know you've had some liver issues you really need to think about minimizing exposure detoxifying making those few swaps that i talked about the other day um, with alex stewart and then going on to doing your weight loss because if you do it but if you do it before you've done everything else it is the wrong way around and there is a possibility of you getting a little bit sick as well so that's that's a really important factor of this so we've got um phase two liver detoxification so what can you do well once you've minimized your exposure you've taken out chemicals you've taken out that kind of thing then you can start swapping your plastics over so i mean the easiest is swapping plastic bottles over using a glass bottle reusable glass bottle using um, a reusable coffee cup all of those little things you can do just to start to 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 minimize that exposure and then start to minimize it in your environment i use air purifier so i imagine that would help as well in terms of my my environment but just min minimizing it then working on the liver so we know um phase two sulfation sulfation loves sulfur that phase really loves sulfur and a lot of people are actually sulfur deficient and some people are even sensitive to sulfur and there are some thoughts that if you're sensitive to sulfur it's because you do have some methylating issues or maybe you're sulfur deficient Amino acids are sulfur based, that's why they, um, if you have some amino acid drinks, you can smell that kind of sulfur, but things like eggs, broccoli, leek, onion, garlic, kale, all the brassica vegetables, um, amino acids like cysteine, amino acids like taurine, amino acids like inositol, all of these help sulfation, your liver function sulfation, um, cauliflower, a little bit of raw garlic, now, if you have problems, if you do have issues and you've got bacteria in the gut and you cannot handle these vegetables, you get bloated, you get smelly flatulence, you've got FODMAP issues, SIBO issues, then what you need to do is maybe getting a little bit of sulfur another way. So Blackmores do wonderful tissue salts um, that are sulfur based. So um, uh, potassium sulfate, magnesium sulfate, um, uh, sodium sulfate so you can use a sulfate kind of base mineral these are beautiful celloids tissue salts and blackmores do them they're really easy to get and that can give you a little bit of sulfur or just doing things like um, MSN is good SAMI is good um, especially if you suffer from a little bit of low mood or depression or you've got methylation issues and then also Epsom salt baths obviously are good and you can also get a tiny 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 bit of magnesium sulfate powder which is which is kind of like a, a gut detox powder but instead of taking the dose I think it's called colon cleanse instead of taking the dose that it says to give you a loose bowel motion you take a tiny tiny bit at night before bed and that kind of puts that um puts that into your body yeah well that might be an oxide there, that one might be an oxide but there is another one that's a that's a sulfate sulfite um um okay so that's the sulfation glucuronidation is another um process another um part of this whole process that you can support as well you can support it with amino acids um <clears throat> support it with things like green apples are wonderful so just a little bit of green apple every day not tons but a little just a little bit of green apple um dill is very good lemonine is very good lemonine is found in pe the peel of lemons the peel of oranges of limes of grapefruit so getting that into your body um can also help um and then i was going to say another thing that really helps um seeds like dill i said dill caraway seeds and also fennel as well so all of those are really helpful for that phase of your liver detoxification which will help to remove the phthalates which will help to remove the bpa and also all the other things chemicals hormones toxins that need to be removed by via that phase now a lot of people um that have this phase of the liver that's a little bit that's that's sluggish and not working when they do hormone tests they find that they're very estrogen and also testosterone dominant and this can also be due to leaky gut as well so if you've got issues detoxifying and you and you've got issues and you've got you're highly exposed to a lot of toxins it most likely you have got leaky gut you will probably display metabolic and thyroid symptoms as well 
Um, what's indicated here is calcium deglucurate. So calcium deglucurate is wonderful at supporting the gut so you don't get that reabsorption as well. So that's a fantastic, it's a beautiful, um, beautiful ingredient that you take and it just helps to calm the gut down and it just helps to stop that reabsorption and it helps to detox at the source, at the gut source. So that's where that's working. Now, just to remember inhibitors of this pathway. So if you're B12 deficient, if you're folate deficient, this pathway is gonna be slow for you, this glucuronidation. If you're vitamin C deficient, um, you're highly stressed. So you're in fight flight all the way, that pathway is gonna be slow as well. If you take um, aspirin, if you take, um, uh, ibuprofen it's going to be slow if you have a low protein diet it's also going to be slow and if you are selenium deficient as well so you can see there's so many different things here that can slow it down also food colorings tartrazine can slow it down as well so you can see if, if you're exposed to all of these plus you're exposed to a lot of the endocrine disruptors and bpa you can see exactly what it can be doing to your body <coughs> okay so Um, so what can you do? Okay, so what can you do? You know how it's detox. You know where you might be exposed to it. So first of all, you minimize and you minimize by just making sure similar plastics, you're using glass, you're using natural where you can, you know, as many natural products as you can. Um, doing a course like Alex Stewart's Go Low Tox course will help you with this, doing that swap over. So that's the first step. Second step is to, is to say, okay, if I know I've been exposed and I most likely have issues with, with BPA, endocrine disruptors, you know, you might have endometriosis, you might have polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, you could have certain estrogen dependent cancers. Maybe you've been trying to get pregnant and you just cannot get pregnant because it will affect fertility. So all of these issues, if you know this is going on for you, first of all, you need to be looking at minimizing your exposure and then detoxifying yourself internally. And just doing this detoxify, I would do this, I would do work on detoxifying for about four weeks. Okay, just work on that before you do anything else. And if you're trying to lose weight, if you've got a bit of weight on you and you're trying to lose weight, don't do it yet. Just work on the detoxifying and limit your exposure. So when you're detoxifying, you're supporting your liver for four weeks. You might be taking some nice B vitamins. You might be taking some nice liposomal glutathione. You could be taking some amino acids um, like taurine or cysteine or inositol and definitely the calcium glucurate is deglucurate is indicated here. Now grapefruit juice is an interesting one. Grapefruit juice can help if you have been exposed to a lot of toxins and phase one is too fast. So if phase one is too fast that's when phase two can get backed up. So grapefruit juice can actually support phase one and kind of slow it down. And this gives the <coughs> this gives phase two an opportunity to kind of catch up and so you don't get as much liver damage. So as much so a little bit of grapefruit juice can help, not long term because then it can change the detoxification pathways, but a little bit um, while you're detoxing. A really good probiotic, lots of brassica vegetables. And if you can't tolerate brassica vegetables, you can do something like MSN or a, a sulfur-based mineral green apple a day, watercress is beautiful. And then lastly, activated charcoal is fantastic. Now activated charcoal, charcoal itself, carbon, um, is used in um, some water purifiers. So it's kind of this carbon and it's, and it's also used in some air purifiers. It's been shown and studies have shown that it does um, kind of cling on to and absorb toxins in these products. What has been found, what our water supply has been found to have things like drug residue in. So that's pharmaceuticals, like the pill, and it's also been found to have BPA residue in, which is really difficult to get rid of. This is why filtering your water is very important. But taking, a, taking activated charcoal in a supplement gets everything it doesn't get anything so what we're doing here is we're detoxing our gut and our liver we're not getting anything out of our fatty tissue we're detoxing our gut and liver so the stuff that we're exposed to just goes straight out and doesn't get stored anymore what activated charcoal does is it works locally in the gut 
to kind of remove everything. So we're not, that it's not working on the liver, it's not working on if we've got it stored in our body. So that's what we work on first, you know, we work on that first and you do that for four, four weeks. Reduce, minimize your exposure to all chemicals during this time so that your liver and your gut and your kidneys and your gallbladder can do what they need to do and they start working optimally. Then you need to mobilize. If you suspect you've got it, if you're trying to lose weight, or you suspect you've got um, toxins in your body, in your fatty tissue, then what you need, signs will be either stubborn weight or skin problems, okay? Eczema, psoriasis, um, I'm suspecting keratosis pilaris might be something. <coughs> so all of those kind of things um, coming up on the skin. So then you need to mobilize. The best way to mobilize is exercise, of course. Exercise and heat starts to mobilize cold and hot therapy. So exercise, really intense exercise coupled with lots of walking, coupled with yoga or hot yoga, just more than you would normally do to start to mobilize these toxins as your liver and your gut are detoxifying and this is what is going to support you once you've done that you can look at then physical cleansing so physical cleansing is one of the most important aspects when we're trying to get things actually out of our body because it's very when it's when it's stuck in our when it's stuck in our body the only thing that will shift it is kind of that physical physical aspect you know we can take a liver detoxifier but that liver detoxifier is not necessarily going to go into the fat um, under our arms or in our butt to get get out what it needs to get out so um, you can do that now when you're exercising one of the best mitochondrial stimulants is L-acetylcarnitine that actually supports your body to remove fatty tissue so if you're really looking at um, detoxifying and also losing weight at the same time L-acetylcarnitine can really support and you take that when you're exercising and that can release everything much quicker then we've got the physical cleanse dry skin brushing once a day before your shower infrared sauna a few times a week epsom salt bath massage lymphatic drainage <coughs> um maybe even acupuncture i haven't looked at the studies actually i need to look at that and how acupuncture supports cleansing from the tissues that's something i haven't actually looked at but we know how wonderful acupuncture is so that's something maybe to think about um, and then finally you can add in spirulina at this point because spirulina does have a lot of chlorophyll and chlorophyll has been shown to be really um, effective at removing those and some studies are coming up showing us that spirulina is actually good at um, removing endocrine disruptors as well. So we've got removing and, and, and limiting your exposure, swapping out, learning what swaps are best for you. Then we've got detoxifying your liver, your kidneys, your bowels. Then we've got, then we've got the physical aspect of exercise to mobilize the fatty tissue, mobilize the toxins, along with maybe something like L-acetylcarnitine. Then we've got the more physical cleanse, which is your dry skin brushing, infrared sauna, massage lymphatic drainage all those beautiful things bouncing on um, a trampoline you know like a little bouncer wonderful for the lymphatic system and helping to get things out so you know that sweating is one of the best things you can do that will help to remove everything so that is the system you want to do if you really do suspect you've been um exposed if you're trying to get pregnant and, and fertility is something you're you're battling with you want to be doing this because not only can this affect fertility but also if you do have this exposure it can it can affect the um it can affect the baby so you do want this is a really great thing as well to do if you're planning pregnancy so um i hope that helped we just focused on bpa we didn't talk about <coughs> too many other endocrine disruptors because actually I took a little bit of time talking about that but you know there are um, flame retardants like I said and if you've had heavy metal testing done and you're high in bromide it's now found that bromide bromide is in flame retardants but also I didn't realize this bromide is also in um, vegetable oil where they kind of mix it with some foods I don't know if we use it in Australia but like soda drinks like coca-cola orange aid that kind of thing and it's bromide is actually mixed with vegetable oils to create this kind of um, liquid that's then put into these soda drinks. So I've had some clients with high bromide in their heavy metal testing, and that could explain why actually. So that's an interesting, and that will inhibit your, uh, bromide inhibits your thyroid. So if you've suddenly, sorry to go on, but if you've suddenly got sick, you know, you've suddenly moved into a new house, or your office did a whole renovation, 
or you've got a new bed or you've got a new sofa and you're experiencing this fatigue like those low thyroid symptoms don't discount it i mean get tested because these things can affect your thyroid they can inhibit your thyroid as well and some some of the main symptoms i hear from people are i suddenly am that sniffly in the morning water retention feeling very fatigued kind of feeling blur and not knowing why so really look at really if anything has changed in your environment you've got something new have a look at that because you can help that you know definitely with bromide we might look at taking iodine because that will support your thyroid and they interact the bromide blocks the iodine so if you take a little bit more iodine it can just boost your metabolism a little bit more so I encourage you that if if you are feeling blur suddenly and you don't know why just think about has anything changed what's changed at work what's changed at home and then you can counteract it that way and work backwards i hope that helped if you've got any more questions please pop that below so that was a little bit about cleansing and then if you want to go deeper in terms of going low tox which is so very important just check out alex stewart's course go low tox she kicks off on monday so that's very exciting don't miss out on that um, but if you've got any questions please pop them below talk to you soon bye